this is 1984 IMO, uh, problem number six, and here is a view of this uh, problem. We're given four numbers. They're all odd integers, and they are ordered in the following way. Finally, we know that the product of A and D is equal to the product of B and C, given by this condition here. We would like to show that if A plus D and B plus C are uh, powers of 2 uh, for some integers k and m, huh? uh, then we need to show that A must be equal to 1. Okay, so this is a standard number theory problem. Uh, before I just uh, bash this question, right? So all I can think of at the moment is, hey, express D as 2k uh, minus A and substitute it uh, inside this expression here and do the same thing for C. But before I do that, one thing that I would like to clarify is uh, the order of K and M. So which one is bigger? Can you see? Um, well, it turns out that it's uh, quite easy to compare these two. Uh, one way is to come up with a smoothing uh, type of argument. Um, in general, the way that we know smoothing is uh, something like this. Um, suppose that on, on a real line you have a median here. Uh, let's say that this is the average of these two p uh, these two numbers. Let's say a and b. So they average out to m. Let's say b is somewhere here. So therefore a plus b is equal to two m. And in a similar way, say uh, actually yeah, why don't we make it look like our numbers here in this example? So call this d. Okay. And then similarly we have b and uh, say c so we increase a by x and we decrease d by x by the same amount so therefore their average should still remain at m right so b plus c is still 2m so therefore a plus d is equal to b plus c so their sum is equal and let's compare which one do you think is bigger ad or bc uh, let's calculate for example uh, bc and let's see if BC is greater than or less than AD. So BC is uh, simply, um, well, replace a, a B with A plus X and replace C with a D minus X. And that would give us AD um, minus what? AX plus DX minus X square. And remember, our goal was to show whether this number is uh, greater than or less than AD. So um, let's keep the AD. I would like to, um, yeah, so le le let's uh, factor out a minus one here. We have, um, let's factor out a minus uh, X. Let's say a minus X. So we have A minus D, that's right, plus X. But let's look, look at this expression. So IA is obviously less than D. So this guy is less than zero. And um, an X is positive. Uh, uh -huh. That's not the way I imagined it. I was hoping the whole thing will be greater than zero. So I probably messed up somewhere. Minus AX plus DX minus X squared. That's right, AD minus X. So we have A minus D plus X. That's strange. X is a positive number, but Oh, 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 silly me, silly me. Okay, um, a minus d, this huge number, right? The this difference, and compare it with x. Uh, well, x is is a positive number, but it is definitely in absolute value. It is less than a minus d, right? So this guy is positive, but the whole thing. Um, so yeah, a minus d, the whole thing is negative, and then this guy is negative, so their product is positive. So therefore, BC is is definitely greater than AD, right? Does that make sense? So, but how about this problem? So what I'm trying to say is, if A plus D and B plus C were equal to each other, 
AD and BC uh, would be such that BC would be greater than AD. But if AD is equal to BC, it must be that we added some stuff into A and D so that we make it bigger than B plus C, right? Does that make sense? So therefore, I'm expecting here, so therefore, A plus D must be greater than B plus C, implying that K is strictly greater than M. Does that make sense? If you don't see this uh, type of smoothing argument, there's another way that you can uh, easily establish it. Once you have this feeling that A plus D is greater than B plus C, we can try to investigate the sign of this thing. But we are given this fact, so this kind of gives me the idea that maybe I can just multiply this whole expression by A, knowing that A is greater than 0. If I can show that this whole product, this guy is greater than 0, if I can show this whole product is greater than 0, then it would mean this thing is greater than 0, suggesting that A plus D is greater than B plus C, like we found earlier. So let's quickly calculate this thing. So that's just A square uh, plus AD uh, minus AB minus AC. And yes, we can just substitute now. And we can substitute AD with BC, obviously. So A square um, plus BC minus AB. Um, yeah, that should work, I hope. Minus AC. Okay. So can I factor this out? I think I can. So let's group these two guys. So we have A factored out, A minus B. And then I want another A minus B. Boom. Okay, so here you go. So I factor out the minus C. So I have A minus B there and an A here. So A minus B again. And boom. So that's just A minus C times A minus B. And of course, this is less than zero. This guy is less than zero because A is the smallest guy. So suggesting that this whole product is greater than zero. But the, this A was greater than zero, implying that this thing is greater than zero. And finally, it suggests that A plus D is greater than B plus C, giving rise to the fact that and the power K should exceed the power M. Okay, so now that uh, we have taken care of this thing, so let me clean this mess. <laughs> um, now it's time to do a little bit bash. Uh, so therefore, here we get that D is equal to 2K minus A. Um, so I can substitute 2K minus A for D, right? So in this expression, so I can just substitute it here. And I do the same thing for this guy. Uh, I can, uh, C is equal to 2 to the M minus B, and I can go ahead and substitute it for the C here. So, um, what should I do? Let me uh, go to the side a little bit, uh, open myself some new space. So, therefore, we have A times, well, obviously, AD is equal to BC, that's what I start with. So, um, well, okay, let's just do it, I guess. So, A times, so D is 2 to the K minus A, and that's supposed to be equal to BC, where uh, I can re replace C with this guy, 2 to the M minus B. Now I can go ahead and expand these things. So this implies, so I'm only worried about these two expressions, obviously. I no longer need these two guys. Um, so I have A times 2 to the K minus A square is equal to B times 2 to the M minus B square hey, move the B square to the left-hand side and move this monster to the right-hand side. So that gives me B square minus A square is equal to, uh, well, knowing that K exceeds M, um, I can, uh, well, okay, let, let's just do it in two steps, I guess. 2 to the M uh, minus A times 2 to the K. Like I was saying, because K exceeds M, I can factor out the 2 to the M, the smaller guy, so therefore, this would be 2 to the m, b minus a times 2 to the k minus m. Does that make sense? And finally, finally, you want this. Obviously, the left-hand side would be a difference of squares, b minus a times b plus a. Hoo -hoo. Okay, so it must be the case that 2 to the m divides this product here, right? So therefore, 2 to the m should divide b minus a times b plus a but that means that um wait a second so that means that both of them are um huh? uh, they uh, they must be uh, r for some integers k and m okay um 
All right. Um, let's just put it here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, obviously they have to agree in terms of their parity. So, and I assume they would be both even, right? Because we have a power of two. So these are both even. So they are both divisible by two. Can they be both divisible by four? Um, that would be a no. Because if they are both divisible by four, their sum should also be divisible by four, right? Uh, let's uh, write it here. If... Uh, B, um, 4 divides B minus A and 4 divides B plus A, then uh, 4 also divides B minus A plus B plus A, which is 2B. But notice that our numbers were all odd, right? They're all odd integers. So D is odd, obviously, sorry, sorry B is odd, so obviously, um, it's not divisible by 4, then 2b is not divisible by 4, uh, suggesting that this can't be true. So, meaning uh, one of them is divisible by 2 to the power m plus 1, and the other one is only divisible, sorry, 2 to the power m minus 1, and the other one is divisible by 2 only. Does that make sense? Uh, but then the natural question is, which one? <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, uh, we can play with with this expression a little bit, and it's it's not too hard to determine. So let me open another space here on the side. Just this is just to uh, answer my curiosity. You don't need to answer this question to finish the problem. But let's uh, see. So b minus a is obviously less than b, and b is definitely. Um, well, because uh, b is less than c, it has to be less than their average, right? So the average should be squeezed between b and c. But why did I do that? Of course, b plus c was uh, 2 to the m, right? So therefore, uh, we have 2 to the m over 2, which is 2 to the m minus 1. So there's no way that b minus a would be 2 to the m minus 1. It must be the other one. So therefore, it is b plus a which is equal to 2 to the m minus 1. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. It is divisible by 2 to the m minus 1. But is it actually equal to uh, 2 to the uh, m minus 1? So that's uh, another uh, issue. But okay, okay, okay. So times, um, times something. But definitely b minus a is equal to 2 times something else. And definitely not equal to 2 to the m minus 1. Uh, um, wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, b plus a is definitely less than b plus c, right? Because obviously a is less than c, so therefore b plus a is less than b plus c. But b plus c was 2 to the m, right? And that capital M here does not include any, any more 2s in it. So if this guy exists and it's not 1, then it has to be 3 or something else, which can't be, right? Because then our number b plus a would have to exceed b plus c. So it must be that m is equal to 1. Yay, we did it. So this implies, well, actually, like, like I said, um, I don't know if it was uh, necessary. I, I doubt we need that much, but still, it, it, we did pretty good, guys. So, um, so 2 to the power m minus 1, and b minus a, therefore, is the rest. So it is 2 times... Um, two times the rest, this, uh, this very ugly expression, b minus a times uh, uh, 2 to the power k minus m. Okay, um, now let's try to exploit the situation further. We know that b plus c is equal to 2 to the m, so, um, and b plus c is equal to 2 to the m. Uh, why not? Let's look at the difference here. Um, yes, so that would imply that b plus c minus b plus a, huh? b plus c minus b plus a is equal to 2 to the m minus 2 to the m minus 1. Ob well, obviously the left hand side is, so this implies left hand side is the b's cancel out, so we have c minus a. And the right hand side is you can factor out 2 to the m minus 1, 2 minus 1, so this is just 2 to the m minus 1. Um... Well, I don't know how useful this will be. Okay, let's just put it aside for a while. Okay, so let's go back to our initial condition. So AD is equal to BC. So let's go back to that. Um, 
AD is equal to BC implies that um, A uh, would either divide B or C. Oh, or both. Okay, okay, okay. So this implies that, okay, so at least I know A divides BC. Yeah, that's for sure, right? So, um, can I show that A and B are relatively prime and then A and C are relatively prime? Yeah, that would do it. So, are they? Uh, let's see. So, if, uh, let's have a look at the greatest common divisor of AB. Let's call it, say, E. Uh, if E divides both A and B, then it must be that E also divides their sum or their difference, right? So it has to divide A plus B, but A plus B is just 2 to the M minus 1. So therefore, E, um, e is, a, is a power of 2. But can it be? No, because A and B are odd. A and B have no 2 in them. So therefore, this implies the only power of 2 that has no no 2 in it is 2 to the 0, right? So therefore, E is equal to 1. Oh, wow. Okay, so therefore, the greatest common divisor of A and B, A and B are relatively prime. So if A divides B, C, and A divides not B, we should sure hope that A should divide C. Let's see if that's the case. If not, we are done, people. So how about the, great, uh, the greatest common divisor of A and C? Let's call it, um, say, F. Ah, that's where this thing will be handy hey <laughs> i was thinking we should make use of this so um well this implies that f should divide a and it should divide c as well because it's their greatest common divisor it's a divisor so f should divide also their difference or the sum so i will make use of the difference this time but the difference is we calculated it as 2 to the uh, m minus 1 again but Again, the same story. So if f divides 2 to the f minus 1, it can, it can only have 2s in it, if any, right? Uh, so this, therefore, f is equal to 2 to the something, right? But wait, uh, can f is defined as the greatest common divisor of a and c, and both a and c are odd. Again, f cannot have any 2s in it, implying that f is really 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. So therefore, the greatest common divisor of a and b is 1. The greatest common divisor of a and c is 1. So therefore... Um, uh, um, so how can it be? A divides the, the product, but A is relatively prime to B, and A is relatively prime to C. This implies, finally, the desired outcome, right? So A indeed must be equal to 1. In fact, we can do even further. So once you know what A is, you can immediately use this expression, right? Let me change my color. Um, so we know what A is now. Uh, using this, you can substitute... Huh? Uh, you, you can substitute 1 for A here, and you can immediately calculate uh, B in terms of M. And once you have, again, uh, so we can plug it in here, and then either you can use that B to, to find C here, or you can directly, you can find C from there. And finally, uh, you can use the um, uh, D is equal to B times C over A, and again, boom, you should be able to get an expression for D as well. And that solves uh, this nice uh, number theory problem. And hope to see you guys in our next lecture.